started out with dance and I was into painting. Basically from when I was young, it was all about the arts. But I started music when I was six. I started playing the piano, started writing when I was 14. So basically, I didn't really think of it as a career. I was just, I like, I, I like, I like to express myself using that medium. So as a child, probably my first dream was to perform because I like to perform, like I, I like to be in front of people. And I think I, I like attention from young. I like attention, so yeah, so like I just like to perform from young, yeah. And actually, I never thought about being a DJ. Like, DJ. like DJing is very new to me. It was a very, very new concept. I only learned about it like probably two and a half years ago when I stepped into the club for the first time. And I was very curious about like how the DJs mix the songs together because I'm a musician, right? So it doesn't make sense to me in a way. Yeah, because we make live music, we start from scratch. But these DJs, they take something else and they turn it into, they, they modify it. So I was very curious and I was very intrigued by it. So um, I went to research on it and that's how I realized that there's something called DJing and I tried it out. And it was never in my plan to become a DJ. I just happened to like be good at it. Yeah. yeah. When I was 19, 20? 19, 20. Yeah, n n like when I turned 20 or yeah, I first tried it out. Like I think my mom um, encouraged me. Like I was telling her about it and she told me like, why don't you just go and try it out? Try yeah. It. And I think she got me my first DJing lesson. Yeah. Oh, so at some like some guy who, yeah, oh, who could okay. take, like like who could guide me, and after that I just sort of I learn and and pick up my skills by myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I think it's luck. It's luck. a bit of luck and a lot of work. But um, I was scouted because I started out doing weddings, small bars, um, one-off events, and from there like people start to know me and I think if you like like I think people can tell if you're good and, and, and people who spot talents. Yeah, so I was lucky because Butter Factory actually was looking for a new DJ at that time, at that point of time. Yeah. And they wanted a female DJ. And it's very, very rare in Singapore. So they they tried and and and, and they liked me. So I, I grew from there. I grew I branched out from there. Because Butter Factory is a very uh, established club so it's not hard for people to notice you after that so it kind of just grew from there yeah yeah of course uh, I took part in two competition um, both in 2012 um, both by Pioneer and the first competition I was the only girl who I got in the top five yeah I was a finalist and the second one was was pretty big skill it was Asia I was I, I came in third Oh, that's good. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. But yeah, it it, it gave it gave me a lot more credibility after that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My current project, I my project is always myself. Uh -huh. Like yeah, I like to like treat myself as a product and market myself. It's like I'm my own business. So uh, my current project probably is to create a brand new night in a club. Uh, with a new concept that no one has seen before, with to infuse live music, infuse underground music, and to infuse your own character into the night, because like DJs, they they play other people's songs so much that they lose character, and it's the same everywhere. So my project is to do something so new and so fresh that people can can't resist but to come, yeah, to like experience something new, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, end of February. End of February. Yeah, February, March. Yeah. Mm, this current project is to take what people has always been doing and add a little salt and pepper to it, like oh. you know, spice things up, and to create like it's a show. Like people like do it every week so much so that it's the same thing every week. It's a job, but to me it's a show. You know, like like you think from the intro to the like the inter like the intersection where you like sort of like break down and then you end it with a bang yeah so it's like it's a story that you must tell so yeah that's my st that is what I'm working on right now yeah oh I pretty much just record them at home but usually I don't do mixtapes anymore mm -hmm. 
because um, it's the same as if you come and listen to me in the club. Yeah. Yeah. So, I think I rather people watch me live than listen to a mixtape. Oh, so everything in the club is just. It's it actually live. yeah. It's like if I record a mixtape right now, it's literally I'm just gonna stand at a console for two hours, but in my bedroom. Right. Yeah, so, and I'm playing someone else's song, I'm playing someone else's remake, so, like, it doesn't make sense to me to play someone else's song, even in my own bedroom. Like, I should be doing my own things, you know, create my, my, my own music. Yeah. Um, hopefully, traveling a lot, performing a lot, um, staging the biggest stage in the world, you know, like, tra traveling, just traveling a lot, and... Yeah, making music on the way, sharing music all over the world. That's what I want in, t in five to ten years. Mm, no, not really. Actually, they are very supportive. Supportive? Huh? Yeah, because from I think it's my personality. Like, from young, they know I like to be different. And they want me to be happy, so I'm happy, so they're happy. Yeah, it's pretty simple. Yeah, it's pretty cool when they come out to the clubs. Well, it's the default answer. You know, like people is, people is always gonna tell you <clears throat> that you can't make it. And they're gonna tell you things like, oh, it's Singapore, you're not gonna make it in Singapore. And they're go and your parents will be saying like, how can you earn money? And do you really think it's worth it? That kind of thing. Oh, they, and they're gonna tell you, oh, it's just a phase. You're just growing up, you'll get, you'll go out of it. And they'll ask you to be like doctors or lawyers or like go get a marketing degree. But at the end of the day, um, you are who you are and you should know yourself best and because you should be strong enough to tell to say no and to take a risk because um, 10 years down the road you're gonna look back and you're gonna regret not taking that step it's it's like just do it and when and when you do it do it all the way don't do it halfway because a lot of people they do it halfway and they're like yeah you're right I I can't do it you know you're like you were right no but it's not it's because you didn't go all the way yeah, when you do something, do it all the way. Like, don't just get lazy and procrastinate and get scared. Don't be scared. People are going to try to bring you down, but... Um, stereotype, sexism, um, feminism is very, very strong. Actually, in every industry, it's very strong, but particularly in this field because of the sudden wave of female DJs. Because everyone suddenly realized that it's so easy to just pretend to be something that they're not and to earn bucks from it and as a business point of view yeah it works but it's a very short term thing and and because so many female DJs has been doing this so much so that people stop trusting female DJs and they doubt you before you even play which sucks if I'm allowed to say that word yeah it sucks because you go to a venue for sound check and there'll be the sound guys and there'll be the male DJs and it's a very male dominated industry yeah. so they stare at you as if you don't know anything they look at you as if like you are a puppy who needs help and it's very very degrading and it's very disrespectful because you should respect everyone as who they are like we are all equal and you shouldn't judge someone before you hear them right so it's very annoying especially when you're spinning and they try to come and help you but they're not helping, they're just annoying. Yeah. So there are a few times when I told someone of them off, like, dude, seriously, it's like I have a degree in music. Like don't like what do you know? Yeah. Don't you know? put me down. Like don't put me down. Like like I'm sorry dude, but I think I know more than you. No offense. And they get offended because they cannot take it because I get it to be a male DJ and and female DJ coming into this industry stealing your job. You know, it's how foreign workers come in and steal our job. That's how we feel, that's how they feel. But then again, it's like, I believe that if you have the ability and the, the, the skill, you should never be afraid, right? If you, if you are good, why, why are you afraid of me? And, and the top 100 DJs, they're all males. So what's the, what's the problem, guys? Like, chill, man. You know, chill out. Yeah, we are not going to steal a job if you're good. So just be confident. I mean, like, it's weird because they are the other ones who are not confident, and it's the females who are confident. That's how we are getting a job. Okay, it's not very interesting because it's just my name. It's like literally my Chinese name. Because <coughs> my Chinese name is Tian mm -hmm. 
So I just changed the G to C because um, the thought process was pretty interesting. It's to make it a brand new adjective by itself. Like when people see something, oh, that is so ting. Oh, you understand? Yeah. Oh, that is so ting. Like even now, it's working because whenever people hear a song, oh, that's so ting. That is ting. Like when they hear a song, oh, that's ting because ting use that. So like I am my own adjective. I create a brand new word. I am my own character. And and it's easy from there because marketing, I don't have to think of anything. I just put think, this is think, and they, oh, I get it because you are think. I am my own product. I don't have to explain anymore. It's done. So that is my thought process when I was thinking of my name. I love it.